Hello guys, we are back at it. Another Hard Rock and Knox product review. This time we are looking at a mid tower from Landcool. This is the PC K9. So that was seven years ago, our last Landcool case review. And now we've got another. All right, so Landcool used to be Lee and Lee's side brand for lower tier cases, but still made out of aluminum and with good quality construction. But Landcool as a brand has kind of dissolved into Lee and Lee as a series now, and that's where we have the revival of the Landcool brand. This is the Landcool One. So they are trying to address airflow, built illumination, elegant aesthetics, and ease of use. So let's see how they did, shall we? Right after this. The new Fatality H370 Performance motherboard is well equipped for 8 gen processors with 10 power phase design, dual Ultra M.2 slots for storage, a fantastic audio interface and dual RGB headers for addressable and 12 volt lighting accessories. Check out the full ASRock 300 series lineup down below. All right, so the Landcool one has got me excited because this is supposed to be their budget series and Lee and Lee is already in this really competitive price point category at $130 for the PC O11 Air and the Dynamic. Make sure to check out reviews for those over here, but the Landcool one comes with two variants, the standard one at $89 and the Landcool one digital at $99. It has the Type-C connection for the front AO and also that beautiful RGB illumination for the front panel. Now, design-wise, I think they've gone into the right direction and it's funny because the front panel is what kind of differentiates this case from many other mid-towers because internally, it's basically the same thing as we've seen from any other mid-towers, but on the exterior, it has this like elegant appeal without being too flashy for the digital model because of that interior center illumination. Uh, we also have the brushed aluminum, which looks awesome, and those chrome edges, which look fantastic at certain off angles. But it also gives us the perception of good airflow because of that center cutout. So you can see the fans underneath, you can see the dust filter, you know, the panel is still spaced out from the frame, which is nice. But the whole idea is like being able to see how the air would enter inside your case and therefore gives you like, all right, so that thing looks elegant without completely choking the fans. The top panel continues with that symmetrical design. It is a simple mesh. There is no built-in dust filter, but that's fine because most likely used for exhaust anyway. So here we have mounts for three 120 mil fans or dual 140 mil fans with their respective radiators. But I wouldn't install a radiator up here because there is just not much height available from the top motherboard to the top fan mount. So it'll be fine with a set of fans up there for exhausting air, but as soon as you mount a radiator there, then you might uh, encounter compatibility issues and just like clearance issues towards that eight pin and anything above the motherboard because the case is not really high enough to support like you know, comfortably support a radiator up top. Now the IO for my digital edition of the case includes dual USB 3 ports, a power button, and LED switch, so you can cycle between different colors and modes, and we also have the Type-C connection up top. Now this front LED is an addressable RGB LED, so you can plug it into your five volt addressable connector on the motherboard, as long as you have the appropriate cable extension with the motherboard. So this is good news if you want to color match case lighting with other hardware. I do like the tempered glass side panel and how it's mounted with two thumb screws at the back. So the entire side looks absolutely clean. However, for the rear side panel, we have two uh, unusual thumb screws at the top, but it's awesome because the side panel kind of like sits at the bottom and then you compress all the cables. So even if you have a giant mess that's sticking out, you'll still be able to close the panel without too much hassle. Now, in order to get the front fan mount, you have to first remove the RGB cable for the front panel. It's a little bit inconvenient, but whatever. There we have also a dust filter and mounts for three 120 fans or dual 140s with their respective radiator sizes. Now the interior has no surprises at all. We've seen this layout over and over again, a basic power supply shroud with a little section uh, at the front that you can remove. So you can fully insert a 360 rad at the bottom and the bottom drive cage can be moved or removed to accommodate that setup. Now the thing is you have to remove that entire drive cage in order to install your drives because 
there are no drive caddies, which is weird for a $100 case. The motherboard standoffs are pre-installed and we have EATX motherboard support up to 280 millimeters. Uh, the rubber grommets are in good location, but they're so soft and just passing a single cable and they fall out. It's a minor thing, but for a $100 case, I was not expecting that. And it's also super frustrating working with something when the rubber grommets are not cooperating and they're constantly falling out of their spot. And actually there are many elements throughout my experience that kind of made me realize that this is their budget series. For example, there are no thumb screws on the PCI slots. We have a plastic cover on the vertical slots and also the front panel, while they've put a lot of work into it for airflow and design aspect, it just feels cheap. It's just very bulky plastic piece that you have to hammer inside the frame that so it can enter. And maybe because of that, one of the aluminum pieces already uh, is kind of coming off because the plastic itself bends, but the aluminum doesn't. And so it just doesn't feel that great. Now, a few more subpar elements include really thin metal on the top fan mount. It just bends way too easily. And also Molex power for the LED connection. Why? Move on to SATA, please. And then coming behind the motherboard tray, it's nice that we have two additional SSD caddies, but again, no thumb screws, so you have to use a screwdriver. At least we have uh, separate uh, mounts for them if you don't want them to be exactly behind the motherboard, but slightly offset closer to the front. And here we also get that LED hub for the LED button that cycles between the colors. So you need to have that connected and powered in order to have that full illumination control. Now the one unique element about the interior is the top of the power supply shroud because we have these two plastic pieces that uh, are basically SSD mounts. So you can put them there and they're nicely cut out for the SATA cables to pass through, which is awesome so cable management will be pretty easy but also if you're not using them for ssd mounts you can remove them and install fans i'm guessing facing up for additional intake and additional airflow for the gpu which is awesome also the case comes with dual 120 mil fans with 1000 rpm spec and finally there is a power supply dust filter at the bottom easily removable from the back and my system assembly went pretty smooth i wasn't expecting any hiccups you know the interior is pretty spacious accommodates my 360 rad in the front no problem and i've relocated one of those uh, included stock fans up top so i have two exhausting and you can see just how little room there is height wise um, at the top so Mounting radiator up there would most likely not be comfortable. And also I noticed for my motherboard setup and where the front IO connection is, uh, those cables will interfere with the SATA cables for the SSD if it was mounted on that spot. So just something to keep in mind. Now for temperature testing, the front panel is not a restriction. You know, there's plenty of airflow from the center and on the sides too, but the dust filter, just like we saw with the O11 Air is a performance hit. It's not significant. It's only three degrees from my tests. And I ran this thing for 40 minutes because I wanted that liquid inside the AO to heat up. And at the back, totally fine with cable management here. I do like that we have Velcro straps so you can use them up and you can also use that front section, that slight indentation to hide all your cables or anything beside your power supply too. And so after spending two days with the Landcool One Digital, it's an okay case, but in the general scheme of things, it's not exactly competitive feature-wise or price-wise. It may be competitive price-wise within Lee and Lee because they don't really produce anything below 100 bucks. That's where the Landcool series comes in. But when you look at the market overall, it's kind of difficult for this thing to stand out. I feel like what needs to happen for the Landcool branding is for it to trickle down into the $69 territory for it to be competitive uh, on the mass scale, because right now the $99 price point is uh, quite tough to compete in. We have the H500i from NZXT, which is a fantastic enclosure. Check out our review. We have the $69 P350X, which basically has all the same features as this does in terms of the internal layout but it is $30 cheaper. Now, granted, this thing looks elegant and it has that different aesthetic to everything else. So that is its competitive advantage right now uh, alongside, you know, without restricting airflow. But I would love to hear what you guys think about the Landcold One introduction into the current market space. And uh, would you buy one for $89 or $99 for the Type-C plus the digital RGB and the front? 
why or why not? The new Mark II Corsair Strafe and K70 keyboards are fully loaded with custom illumination, convenient media buttons, USB pass-through, extra set of keycaps, and ergonomic wrist rest for each keyboard so you can type or game comfortably with a variety of MX switches available so you can check out which keyboard suits you best in the description below. Now it is exciting to have another player in this space and how will others react to this introduction, hopefully with better features at lower price points. All right, guys, hope you guys enjoyed this one. Make sure to check out this other relevant content, subscribe to our new boot sequence channel, and we'll see you next video.